I hear the big board got heated on Friday when I was away. Yeah, it got a little hot. Okay, <laughs> just a little bit. It's a good one. <laughs> We're back now with the, uh, this big board, Oscar Week, kicking off the day. Lots of news out of Hollywood. Dan Abrams back here at the table with us, and Complex Magazine's Alex Gale. Good to have him joining us from Los Angeles. We're going to start with Angelina Jolie, Alex, the actress, as you know, speaking out publicly for the first time about her divorce from Brad Pitt, and this is what she had to say in an interview with the BBC. It was a very difficult time, and and we are a family, and we will always be a family, and we will get through this time and and hopefully be a stronger family for it. Alex, we know that she was there in Cambodia to promote her, her new film there, but she was asked about her impending divorce. Um, what, do you, what do you make of her statements, Alex? This interview was really, really powerful. You know, it's obvious she's still wounded, but she was not at all afraid to show it. It's the first time that she's spoken about it. Um, you know, and she didn't say a lot in her words, but the tears, they really, really mm. spoke volumes. You know, but as honest and as raw as the interview was, it's also really interesting to look at the parts that were obviously pretty planned. Uh, I mean, look at the beautiful setting in Cambodia where the film, uh, which, which the film is focused on. Look at the way they're sitting cross-legged looking at each other. It's very unusual. Uh, you know, Angelina is very, very smart, and she knew if she were to speak about the divorce in this interview that it would get a ton of coverage. So why not use something bad, this divorce, and use it for something good to shine a light on this movie, uh, which focuses on Cambodia, a uh, country that she loves, and the genocide there. Uh, but, you know, the, the big standout to me really was when she said, we are a family and we will yeah. always be a family. Was she talking about her and the kids, or was she talking about her and the kids mm. and Brad? Uh, it's impossible to know, but it does look like a divorce that was taking a very, very nasty direction has done a bit of a U-turn, and that's that's great to see. It yeah, is. yeah, it is great to see. But it did a, it did a big, big U-turn, big swooping U-turn. And and Dan, they both agreed to have a private um, judge and a private forum settle this divorce case. What are the benefits of doing it that way? For, for this kind of case, it's huge advantages. Most importantly, privacy. Right? Right? This has been so ugly in the public eye. And remember, typically, when you file papers in court, they're made public. So now they can do everything in private. Number two, it's faster. Um, you've also got a judge with more expertise. You don't just have some random judge plucked to do this case. You can pick a judge who's got specific expertise, who will have more sensitivity. And when you've got the, the resources, and most importantly, both parties can agree to it, it's a great way uh, to deal with uh, a divorce. A lot of us are, everyone is grateful that they've kind of backed down a little mm -hmm. bit because, as you said in the beginning, it was very contentious. And, and you alluded to it as well, Alex. What, what do you think is behind this, this the softer approach? I mean, of, of course, it's impossible to know, but remember, these are two of the biggest stars on the planet. They have huge careers, and they have really pretty sterling reputations uh, in and out of Hollywood. Uh, you know, and who knows what other kind of allegations could have surfaced. Uh, this could have really, really hurt their careers, and I doubt Angelina would want to see uh, Brad's livelihood and reputation ruined. And remember, they have six kids together. That's right, the most right. important thing here. You know? Absolutely. You wrap around, but... Kids, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to move on to the next story about that backlash in Hollywood over lack of female directors. Film studios are reportedly under investigation, accused of unfair hiring practices. And Dan, what can you tell us about this situation? Do you think there's a court case here? So for about a year, maybe a little more, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC, has been investigating investigating the major studios. The challenge with this is that there are a lot of studios and there are a lot of decisions that go into every director being hired. So it's not just like you can say, is there discrimination at this company? Because when you're talking about studios and you're talking about films, different people are associated with every different film sure. and therefore different decisions are being made and because you're talking about all these major studios. With that said, they have been interviewing dozens of female directors. They've been uh, interviewing, of course, other male directors as well. Mm -hmm. But there's no question the EEOC is taking this seriously, and it seems they may even be at the stage where they're effectively trying to mediate what they call conciliation, mm. trying to figure out a solution. When, when you look at the numbers, Dan and Alex, a recent study found that 7% of 2016's top grossing films were directed by women. 7%. But the problem doesn't stop there, does it, Alex? Absolutely not. I mean, those numbers are damning and they don't lie. Uh, and even worse is that that's actually down from 9% the year before. Uh, and it's not at all like there's a shortage of massively talented 
female directors out there. I mean, just to, you know, to name two, there's Ava DuVernay, who directed Selma and 13th, one of the best documentaries of last year. There's Catherine Bigelow, mm -hmm. uh, who did Hurt Locker. But for whatever reason, they're not getting the same chances uh, that male directors are when it comes to these big blockbuster films. Uh, you know, there is, you know, there is a, Patty Jenkins uh, is directing the Wonder Woman film coming up this year, so that's really good to see. But we have a long, long way to go. We do. Alex, good to have you with us. I'm sure we'll have you back Thank with you. us from time to time. Thank you, Dan, as always. You.